The review responds to what Donald Trump, U.S. military say is an escalating array of threats, and it acknowledges that prospects for further nuclear arms reductions in the near future are extremely challenging. Washington, the U.S. military's regional commanders must for the first time in at least a decade update contingency war plans to incorporate the use, in the most dire circumstances, of nuclear weapons, according to the Pentagon's latest nuclear posture review published on Friday. The review responds to what President Donald Trump and military leaders say is an escalating array of threats, and it acknowledges that prospects for further nuclear arms reductions in the near future are extremely challenging. Military leaders see China and Russia in particular as bolstering their nuclear forces, incorporating them into their strategic plans and taking more aggressive actions in outer space and cyberspace. The review is intended to ensure that our diplomats and our negotiators are in a position to be listened to when we say we want to go forward on non-proliferation and arms control, Defense Secretary Jim Mattis told reporters on Friday. You do so by having an effective, safe deterrent and you have to look at each of those words. Nuclear stockpile. The Pentagon report also calls for development of a wider range of lower yield nuclear weapons that can be launched from submarines and ships. The U.S. currently has about 1,371 nuclear weapons, down from a peak of more than 12,000 during the Cold War and under existing treaties could raise that level to 1,550. Critics who reviewed a leaked copy of the draft published last month in the Huffington Post said the administration's approach is reckless and makes the use of nuclear weapons more likely. The risk of use for nuclear weapons has always been unacceptably high, Beatrice Fine, executive director of the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, which won the 2017 Nobel Peace Prize, said in an email. The new Trump nuclear doctrine is to deliberately increase that risk. It is an all-out attempt to take nuclear weapons out of the silos and onto the battlefield. Under this strategy, regional commanders and military services leaders will plan, train and exercise to integrate U.S. nuclear and non-nuclear forces and operate in the face of adversary nuclear threats and attacks. It also provides momentum to U.S. plans to modernize the nuclear triad, the capacity to deliver nuclear weapons by land-based missile systems, submarines and strategic bombers, an effort that is expected to cost as much as $1.2 trillion through 2046 for development, purchase and long-term support, according to the Congressional Budget Office. Russia Options Highlighting the perceived threat from Russia, a nation Trump has repeatedly said he'd like to work more closely with, military commanders will also have to develop response options against the country's leaders if they initiate limited nuclear tactical strikes against NATO, Greg Weaver, deputy director of strategic capabilities for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters on Thursday. There are strong indications that our current strategy, posture and capabilities are perceived by the Russians as potentially inadequate to deter them, Weaver said. Trump signaled his interest in a broader nuclear arsenal soon after his election, when he said on Twitter that, the United States must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability until such time as the world comes to its senses regarding nukes.
About a month after Trump's election, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his nation should enhance the combat capability of strategic nuclear forces, primarily by strengthening missile complexes that will be guaranteed to penetrate existing and future missile defense systems. Cyber Attacks The Pentagon review was deliberately ambiguous about whether a debilitating cyber attack from Russia, China or North Korea would trigger a nuclear response. The leaked draft had hinted that it could. Weaver and General Paul Salva, vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs sought to emphasize the new document's continuity with the 2010 version, with Selva saying it didn't represent a sea change. The officials said the development of more low-yield weapons and clear elaboration for when nuclear weapons might be used were the primary differences between the two documents. Deterrence and assurance have gone to the top of the agenda, and there's no emphasis as in 2010 on de emphasizing nuclear weapons, nor is there an effort to boost their importance, according to Rob Sufer, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Nuclear and Missile Defense. They failed. That didn't assuage the report's critics. Even though a lot of the words are the same, the fundamental purpose of the 2010 NPR was to reduce the role of the missions and numbers of nuclear weapons and move together with other countries to reduce numbers, said Joe Serencioni, president of Plowshares Fund, which seeks to reduce and eventually eliminate nuclear weapons. They didn't get there. They failed. I think it's a significant departure from 2010 and will be understood and perceived that way by others who follow these issues and the international community," Joan Rolfing, president of the Nuclear Threat Initiative, told reporters this week. Under the review, the first low-yield weapon to be fielded would be a modification to what Sufer described as a small number of D-5 submarine-launched ballistic missiles built by Lockheed Martin Corporation. Ohio-class submarines now carry as many as 20 of the D-5 missiles. Hiroshima bomb. Each D-5 carries as many as eight warhead switch, depending on type, pack from 100 kilotons to 455 kilotons of explosive power, enough to qualify as high-yield weapons. A modified D-5 would probably have five to six kilotons, said Hans Christensen, director of the Nuclear Information Project at the Federation of American Scientists. The Pentagon considers any warhead with 20 kilotons of explosive power low yield, said Christensen. By comparison, the little boy atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan in August 1945 possessed 15 kilotons of explosive force. Fat Man, dropped on Nagasaki three days later, possess 20 kilotons. Another missile which will likely take several years to develop and field is a ship-launched, low-yield replacement to Raytheon Company.S nuclear tomahawk, retired under international treaty. The Navy will begin studies in 2020 to assess alternative ways to deploy the missiles on the 12 new Columbia-class nuclear submarines, the first to be fielded in 2031. 
The Pentagon Review and Explanations by Officials Trying to Distinguish Between Strategic and Non-Strategic, or Tactical, Nuclear Weapons are at odds with previous comments by the top U.S. nuclear weapons military official, Strategic Command Head General John Hyten. I don't agree with the term tactical nuclear weapon, he told the House Armed Services Committee in March. I just fundamentally disagree that there is such thing as a tactical nuclear weapon. I believe that anybody that employs a nuclear weapon in the world has created a strategic effect, and all nuclear weapons are strategic. Bloomberg. Bloomberg.